Mm, mm, mm. Our theme this month is joy. My topic today is joyful no matter what. Joyful no matter what. Joy is an inside job. Joy is not a response. Too often we get into this attitude of, well, what should I be joyful about? I'm busy looking around at all this stuff. <laughs> I can't see anything to be joyful about. Mm -mm. No. Don't confuse your joy with happy. See, happy comes from the root word, English root word, meaning circumstance. Happenstance, your circumstance. So we're happy when we are pleased with the circumstances. However, joy is transcendent of the circumstances. And I dare say that you won't really know joy till you are in that midnight hour and you can feel joy when you hate the circumstance. Listen to what I'm saying. The joy is triumphant. The joy is transcendent. The joy is not conditioned upon what is going on in the outer world. Joy is a choice. It's a choice. It's not just a feeling that you wait to come upon you. It is an attitude that you invoke, a vibratory field that you activate. It is a perception and a lens through which you choose to see the world. And nobody can take that away from you. Like the song that we sing here, that old spiritual about this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. World didn't give it. World can't take it away. Your joy is a choice. You hear me say all of the time, your experience is not what happened. It's how you name it. Your experience isn't the particulars of what happened. It's what does it mean to you? What is the meaning that you are infusing it with? And I contend that it is our responsibility as spiritual beings to align our perceptions with spiritual truth. Listen to what I'm saying to align our perceptions with spiritual truth. I have spent an enormous amount of my life being angry. And in my mind, I still can think and justifiably so. What does that mean? Yes, that the circumstances were definitely uh, worthy of anger. But was it worth my joy? Listen to what I'm saying. That something can be bad enough to be deserving of your anger, but do you want to trade your joy for the anger because you can't have both? You can't have both. When we are stuck in the anger, we are not free. It isn't that we have anger, the anger has us. I actually did a TEDx talk on this, TEDx Berkeley, in 2016, I think it was by now. And that was its topic. It was about forgiveness, and it was something that I had learned from all of my years of work doing uh, prison work. What I had learned, particularly from the lifers, is that freedom and anger cannot occupy the same space. Freedom and anger can't occupy the same space. And it took me decades to figure out that the self-righteous anger was at my expense. Is at my expense. See, you, you, you get to choose. And one of the things that I love about the Nobel Peace Laureates 
is how joyful they are. I remember when Martin Luther King Jr. got the Nobel Peace Prize. And I vowed to myself at that point in time that I wanted to do that. What I didn't really consciously understand was that the people who got the Nobel Peace Prize didn't get the prize just by being peaceful. That the way you earn the Nobel Peace Prize <laughs> is that you're peaceful in the midst of all this other stuff. But when I look at them, and the Dalai Lama and Bishop Desmond Tutu, who are both uh, Nobel Peace Prize laureates, actually have a book together called Joy that uh, Doug Abrams here in uh, uh, Santa Cruz um, helped to coordinate and, and, and edit and, and put that together. And if you ever see these two, they're just infectious. When the Dalai Lama laughs, I mean, it's this good, hearty laugh. When Bishop Tutu laughs, it's this good, hearty laugh. That there's something about the understanding that your joy is not conditioned upon the circumstances that allows you to live in freedom. There's an old saying that hate is like drinking a whole gallon of poison and praying the other person's going to die. King Jr. said that he would never, ever, ever stoop so low as to hate. Because when he begins to hate, he becomes as low as the thing that he's hating. Listen to what I'm saying. I learned the hard way that we become what we don't forgive. Just let that sink in for a moment. We become what we don't forgive. This is how we get into the cycles of abuse, where the abused child winds up later on being the batterer. We're just finishing up the 4th of July weekend. And it's so interesting to me that all of the things that the so-called founders were coming to the United States to leave behind, they recreated. They recreated. They came here supposedly to get away with the caste system, for there to be freedom and liberty for everybody, but just came here and not only recreated the same caste system, but hung on to them longer. Even after England had stopped slavery, the United States would not. The disparities in the working class and the wealthy gentry class that they were supposedly coming over here to not do was exactly what got reenacted. You become the bitterness that you harbor. You become it. Is it worth it? See, I perceive my job as a spiritual leader to speak words of truth. People say, well, that's mighty uh, arrogant. How, how do you know the truth? Well, I don't know the truth the truth, but I try to speak words of truth. Words of truth and truth has a vibration. 
The vibration of truth is healing even if it hurts. The vibration of truth is inclusive. It leaves no one out. Truth is redemptive. It's like the big compost pile, like Mama Earth, that can have everything come out of her and take everything back into her and cleanse it and purify it. When it's truth, it's not transitory. It's not trendy. It is transcendent of history and time and culture. It doesn't have a patent. No one group can own it or possess it, define it, capture it, limit it. When you hear words of truth, something hits you deep within your heart that brings a place of remembrance. L listen to what I'm saying. I come from a really long line of educators. Since I was two years old, every year of my life, I have either been teaching or in class or both. Lifetime student. Educari, the Latin word of educate, means to bring forth. We tend to think of education as a deposit in. We, th we tend to think of education as putting something in people's mind. But that's not what education is. Education is to tap into the inner wisdom that they already know and bring it forth. So when you hear the words of truth, something says, I knew it. There's a kind of, ah, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You start connecting the dots with all these other things. You don't have to be convinced of it. You don't have to be sold it because it resonates within you. And once you tap something that you know is the kernel of truth. You can't be talked out of it. You can't be talked out of it. There's nothing anybody can do. There's nothing anybody can say that can take away that glimpse and moment of truth that you've had. I'm thinking of something now that used to happen with the education department at Agape. I'm one of the founders of the Agape International Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. And before the uh, classes would start in the fall, we did them on the academic year, we would have these big retreats. And, and I love the way our founder, uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith, would put it. He, he would tell them at the end, he says, we bring you all here together so that you fall in love with each other before you find out you don't even like each other. He says, so that by the time you find out you don't even like each other, it's too late. You already love them. It's kind of like that. that when you tap into that truth of the oneness and you feel that, there is nothing that can happen out there that can persuade you that it's anything other than that. I might be mad, I might be upset, but I cannot deny the oneness. Words of truth. I was taught that my job was to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. And that includes myself. This joy that I'm talking about, this joy is within you. It's not so much looking out there to find something that you like 
to be joyful about. It's you knowing who you are. The joy comes not from what other people are doing. The joy comes from who you are. So yesterday marked the anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence in the United States. And the preamble is famous. It's been infamous for centuries about we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And amongst them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's a beautiful letter, those spirit downloads that I get, this letter is actually titled Inalienable. And it can be found in the second volume of my Letters from the Infinite series. The title of that book is called Your Deepest Intent. And it deals with this conceptually. And I love the way it explains it and says, we have so missed the point that when we talk about these inalienable rights, we think that what is inalienable are these rights. These things that somehow have been given to you that nobody can take away from you. This is the inalienable that can't be separated from, Spirit Voice says, is your relationship to me. That's what's inalienable is that I, as the, your creator, have endowed you with my essence that cannot be separated from. He says, when you think of it this way and, 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 and you keep putting it this way, it says, you act as though you have been given a blank check to do any old thing you want to do. He says, you have so misunderstood this. This, as being a part of me, you haven't been given a check, you've been given a charge. This, you haven't been given rights, you have been given responsibilities to use your inalienable connection to me for the benefit of life and liberty and happiness. Not to get your own, but charged with using that inalienable power and connection that you have. Free that in for a moment. But here's the problem. We forget who we are. We get so caught up in the circumstances and the conditions and what everybody else is doing with their power that we forget ours. We go into a place of spiritual amnesia. Because other people have forgotten who they are. Don't forget who you are. Because somebody else is squandering their spiritual inheritance. Because they don't remember their sacred interconnectedness with the divine. Because they've forgotten, don't you forget. And not only don't you forget your inalienable connection, don't forget theirs. Don't collude with their amnesia. Somebody up in here got to remember. What people do is not a sign of their goodness or their badness. It's a measure of their awareness or their ignorance. That's what it is. There are not bad people. There are only good people who do bad things when they don't know they're good people. There are only good people who do bad things when they don't realize that everybody's a good person. So what you see out there that you think is enough to not cause you joy, don't get stuck in what you see. Cleanse it. Purify it. This is your charge. This is our responsibility. It doesn't matter why it's there. 
Clean it up. Clean it up. We can't be sitting around going, well, you know what? We didn't mess up the whole zone. That wasn't me. I didn't pollute the river. What you worried me for? No. We are all here. And we are all here together. Remember who you are. <laughs> I love Mom's Mabley. Mom's Mabley. <laughs> Mom's Mabley was one of the first stand up comedians to be black and a woman in the United States. She was real popular in the 50s and the 60s. And she always um, appeared like a bag lady. And she'd have his little hat on and she'd do her routine without her dentures. <laughs> so, y'all kind of talk like this. And, and when, when I'm teaching my practitioner students, sometimes I'll use this mom's Mabley routine to tell them what not to be. She said, a man went into a psychiatrist's office and he took a box. Butterflies. They all over me. And the psychiatrist looked at it and said, Well, what the hell are you blowing them over here on me for? Don't be the psychiatrist. Worried about everybody blowing their butterflies over on you. Stand up. Remember who you are. There's a show I do once a month. It's broadcasting now out of the UK. And it's Yes to Life. It's on the Life Conversations radio. I do it with my dear friend, Ade. And I'm going to be doing it day after tomorrow. And I know we're going to go deep. And I know one of the things that we're going to be talking about is how ultimately what we, when we're feeling joyful, it's because we can see value and worth in things. Not just that we're happy, but we see the underlying sacredness of it. And most especially life. And you can tell what we value by what we measure. And when we're not measuring things, we're not valuing it. I'm not going to go into that whole thing now, but it's to say that there is a reason why people say counter blessings. There's a reason why they say that. They say that because if you start counting your blessings, you will take an accounting of your blessing. And as you're doing your accounting, this kind of ledger sheet that you've got in your mind of debits and credits, of like good stuff, bad stuff, or whatever, we're too busy looking at all what we think is wrong. And when we can tune in to the vibration of the goodness that we know, it will recalibrate you. So you aren't just giving thanks or something in the past, your energetic field will start putting you in anticipation of more because as Lynn Twist says, what you appreciate, appreciates. What you appreciate, appreciate. I know we're in some really extraordinarily tough times.
and the United States response to the global pandemic of COVID-19 just baffles the mind. And even in the midst, I hope you feel it. I hope you sense it. Something's happening. And it is so big that we can't go back. We can only go forward. It, it is so big, the awakening of social conscience, the demonstrations that George Floyd's murder has sparked around the world. I'm watching things I never would have believed that I would have seen before. We've gone from banning Colin Kaepernick for taking a knee, honoring the African-American men dying in the streets, getting blackballed by the National Football League, to they are going to open with the Black National Anthem. <laughs> the NFL. I'm watching statues of hate come down. I'm watching reform happen. Some places like some real, real police reform. I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm trying to dress it up, white people. I, just in the streets, shouting Black Lives Matter really hearing them say, and white supremacy's got to go. With an understanding of that, the, the ozone hole, the biggest one on the planet, over the Arctic has closed. The planet's been getting a break. Financially, it's, it's, it's rough, it's tough. As a ministry, we've been thrown in the washing machine just like everybody else. We were inches from moving and all the money and stuff we thought we'd have. I am not afraid. I am so not afraid because I know our God is doing a new thing, a new thing. And I've even, heard the messages say how it's going to blow your mind so that there will be no mistake that I'm God because it won't be by your will. It won't be by your might. It won't be by all of your plans that basically I'm going to make believers out of all y'all. So you hold tight to what you know. You have faith and do not doubt. When I look around, it reminds me of when I first stood on this pulpit and we didn't have any money. And this was an escrow with somebody else. And I, it's like, I didn't care. I don't know what y'all got to do about it, but this is mine. We had visioned this place for years. And we wound up getting it. And it's the same thing now. There are things that are in, in motion. It, it's like I can taste it. I can taste the freedom. I, I, I can taste the expansion that's happening with our global community. I, I, I can taste the awakening. We were inches away from having our new branding out where it's everything from messaging to the website, to social media, to the logo design, and like all of this. And, and to the outer eye, it would appear like we're stuck because we don't have the finances now that we knew that we were gonna have. And we need about 10 grand right now to press through this next phase so that we can meet the global demand that's out there. 
And, and I think it's something that Deepak Chopra says. Where's the good going to come from? From wherever it is now. And I am refusing to set my sights lower. There was a point in time when I would look around at the circumstances and conditions and would say, oh, well, I guess it's not going to happen. Or, oh, well, you know, I guess we have to wait. No. 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 I don't know how. And this is for everything in my life, for everything in this ministry. And I'm inviting you to come up to that same place of boldness. See, you don't have to know the wherefores. You don't have to know the hows. Just know the what. That our God is an awesome God and makes a way out of seemingly no way time and time and time again. And that's why I have joy. I have joy not because of what I've done, not because of all the stuff that I can see out there, but because I know that there is a wisdom, that there is an intelligence, and it only wants for itself the best. We are created in its image and its likeness, and it is pouring forth. There is a healing that is taking place right now. Oh, it's bigger than anything that we can name, and that includes you. That includes your family. That includes your body temple. That includes your finances. That includes everything about you and your family. Manna from heaven. Manna from heaven. You have been endowed by your creator with inalienable rights. You can't earn the right to be alive. No, just because you are. Let that be enough this day. Let that be enough. Just because I am. Just because I am. Sometimes we say it's, I am that I am. Hey, hey, yeah. In Hebrew, hey, hey, yeah. it, 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 it's literally, I have been what I have been, I am what I am, and I will be what I will be. And so it is with you. Don't make a God out of the circumstances. God is your God. You remember who you are. And you dare to have some joy. No matter what, this joy I have, the world didn't give it. And the world cannot take it away. 